Testing one, two. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two.
We'll now call this meeting of the Jacksonville City Council to order. I want to welcome everyone who has come out tonight to the meeting, all those that are in attendance and all those that are watching the uh, meeting on G10 television. Uh, we're going to begin tonight. Uh, first, uh, uh, before we get started, I'd like to recognize some young gentlemen uh, that are in attendance here with us tonight uh, from uh, Troop 370 at uh, Trinity Methodist Church uh, from Boy Scouts of America. And they're going to come forward and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by the invocation by our city attorney, Mr. John Carter. If you uh, young gentlemen would, would come up front here and lead us in the pledge, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, they are working on their citizenship badge. That brings them here with us tonight. Thank you again for joining us. We'll have the adoption of the agenda. Uh, Council, you have a <laughs> copy of it in front of you tonight. Move for the adoption of the agenda. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank you. Normally it's not done that way, but we, we did it that way tonight. Uh, I'd like to ask Mr. Rolando Rios to come forward and join me, please, along with Chief Pionero and Officer Robin Wallace. At approximately 9.30 p.m. on January 2nd, 2015, Jacksonville Police Officers Robin Wallace and David Chandler were conducting a routine proactive of Brook Valley Park when they observed an individual in the park after hours. While talking with the suspect, officers found he was wanted on an outstanding felony warrant. The officers began the arrest procedures when the suspect suddenly ran from them towards a residential area in New River neighborhood. Officers were able to stop the fleeing suspect behind a re residence. The suspect was extremely combative, kicking and punching both officers during an extended physical altercation. Mr. Rolando Rios, a resident of New River, observed the struggle and immediately offered to help the officers. 
Mr. Rios assisted the officers in holding the suspect until the arrival of additional police officers. Mr. Rios' outstanding assistance with the apprehension of a hostile and aggressive criminal during this incident is consistent with the requirements set forth in the agency's award program. Therefore, we are conferring on you the uh, award of a civilian commendation. Thank you, Mr. Rios. And uh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Again, thank you. Thank you, Chief. Always nice to have somebody help. Yes, huh. absolutely. <laughs> thank you. I'd like to ask, uh, sorry, Chief, I need you back up here again. I need uh, Jeff McAllister and Deneen Green if you would join me up here. Jeff and Deneen are both telecommunicators with Jacksonville Police Department. And uh, they're here uh, with the Chief uh, to accept a recognition and proclamation for Public Safety Telecommunications Week. Uh, Public safety telecommunicators play an important role as far as the, uh, in today's workforce. Uh, these telecommunicators serve as frontline public safety ambassadors to citizens in times of emergency or stressful situations. They hand, they're the first ones to answer the call. They're the ones that pass it on to the officers to respond. And with that, I would like to read uh, to you this proclamation that has been uh, prepared for recognition of this uh, week. Whereas April 12th through the 18th, 2015 marks the 24th annual National Observance of Public Safety Telecommunicator Week dedicated to the men and women who serve as public safety telecommunicators. And whereas these highly professional, highly trained professionals are more than anonymous voices on the telephone line. They serve as frontline public safety ambassadors to citizens in times of emergency or stressful situations. They are dedicated and motivated people who serve the citizens of Jacksonville at some of the most critical times in their lives. And whereas the professional public safety telecommunicator is a vital link between citizens, victims, and public safety providers, their service as the unseen first responder is invaluable in emergency situations where time is critical and accuracy is vital. And whereas the citizens of Jacksonville place their trust in these individuals, not just this week, but every day of the year. The city of Jacksonville is proud to recognize the service of public safety telecommunicators, and therefore I, Sammy Phillips, the mayor of the city of Jacksonville, do hereby proudly proclaim the week of April 12th through the 18th of 2015 as Public Safety Telecommunicator Week in the city of Jacksonville. And I urge that all citizens join with me in recognizing the important role and responsibility that these dedicated individuals have in responding to the public safety needs within our community. Thank you very much for what you do and all those that you're here representing also. I think there's how many of you now? 14. 14 telecommunicators here with Jacksonville PD. How's your new digs doing, by the way? Great. You like it up there? Okay, very good. They've got moved into the new place and working out of there now. But here you go. I'm gonna present that to you. And sure. thank you very much, Jeff. Chief and Silver. You know, it, it, uh, it always does my heart good to do this week because, you know, these are really the forgotten folks when we talk about uh, emergencies. And they're the ones that get the resources there quickly. We've talked about uh, a lot of times about the police and firefighters, how they get out there and save lives. Well, it all starts with the phone call and it starts with getting those resources to them as quickly as they can. And these uh, the telecommunicators do a phenomenal job. In fact, 99% of the time, they answer the call within three seconds uh, of it, or, or three rings. And that's, that's, that's really phenomenal when you think about it. So 
We're really proud of them. They do a really great job for us, and we couldn't do it without you. Thank you very much. The last presentation I'd like tonight, uh, to make tonight, and I'd like to ask Mr. Hunter Hadley if you would come forward. I think you have a presentation that you want to make uh, to the city. story behind this picture here. Um, this is a gift that uh, wow. we're giving to the mayor to use in his office. Um, it's a little story behind this. I was uh, sitting in the uh, Bojangles about six or eight months ago. Let me hold it up and speak into the mic. Okay. I was in Bojangles about six or eight months ago and I was sitting in the booth and I looked up and they had this picture on their wall in Bojangles. And I said, that's one of our houses that we built on Railroad Street. So uh, my son, who is, uh, we're mighty, my grandson we're mighty proud of, is now on the golf tour, and they're one of his sponsors. So I called them, and they gave, us, uh, gave me permission. So I went and had three copies of those made because this shows the houses that we built in the beginning of the... It's beautiful the uh, park there and I wanted to share that with you all to show you what progress we're making and how much I appreciate uh, working with uh, the everybody concerned in trying to rejuvenate downtown and uh, we appreciate what y'all do for us and that's going to go in your office sir yes absolutely all everybody, right everybody else is going to get that one right. I like your pen too thank you sir <laughs> thank you I admire that house every time I go by there. It's absolutely gorgeous. Well, that's good. We look at it all the time. Now, there you go. Thank you. I, want, I meant to tell you, congratulations to your wife for her honor that she received. She was the uh, business lady of the year. And, uh, well, thank you. I, I, I will certainly pass. If she's not watching the meeting, I'll certainly pass it on to her. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, this uh, brings us to our first section of public comment for the evening, and I do not have anyone signed up at this time, but I know sometimes we get the list a little quick. Is there anyone present that wishes to speak at public comment? If so, please uh, indicate by raising your hand. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, we have the adoption of the consent items and the minutes. We have minutes from the March uh, 3rd, 2015 special workshop meeting, the March 3rd uh, regular meeting, uh, the March 17th special workshop meeting and March 26th special meeting. Move to accept the consent items and the minutes as so stated. Second. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, that brings us to uh, item number six on the agenda for tonight, and this is a Board of Adjustment appointment. I believe we have one. Uh, slot that's open. Mr. Bittner is the council liaison to the Board of Adjustment and Mr. Bittner I'll turn to you now for any nominations that you wish to make. Mr. Mayor, City Council, I would like to nominate Matt Ray for a term on the Board of Adjustment. Okay. Make a motion. We close nominations except by acclamation. Second. All in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Item number seven, fee schedule amendment for commercial dumpster collection. And uh, Wally Hansen will be presenting this item. Mr. Mayor, Council. <clears throat> this item for your consideration is an amendment to the fee schedule for the commercial dumpster collection to cover expenditures based on actual expend expenses in the first part of fiscal year 15 and to cover actual expense. Ex uh, the projected budget, I'm sorry, for fiscal year 16. The proposed fee schedule adjustments include increasing the commercial collection fee from the current $6 to $7.70. It includes making um, Saturday service available to all customers that request it. And it includes reducing our monthly rental fees for the city-owned containers 
or dumpsters, I'm sorry. The proposed increase in the monthly bill would be $14.73 for twice a week pickup. So that would mean for a customer with a two cubic yard twice a week pickup, their bill would go currently from $79 to $93.73. And for a eight cubic yard container for twice a week pickup, it would go from $159 a month to $173.73. The action needed this evening is for council consideration on the proposed fee schedule amendment. And at this time, I'll be happy to answer any questions. All right, council, any questions of Mr. Hanson? Okay, thank you, Paul. Thank you. All right, right. right. Council, you've been asked to uh, consider the uh, but the proposed uh, fee schedule amendment. to adopt the schedule as presented. Second. Okay. Discussion. I'd like to just point out that the council was privileged to be served by a group of commercial users of this system. who advocated very strongly that they believe the quality of the service the city was providing was ample justification <coughs> for the city to continue providing this service rather than putting it out to bid for a private contract. And when it was explained to them all that the fees necessary for the city to carry forth on this service on a self-sustaining basis and the existing fee schedule would have to be amended uh, I believe to a person they endorsed at least the concept of the fees being necessary to cover the quality of service and I did not hear a descending voice so I think that was encouraging to the City Council to know that the business community not only is backing up the city's endeavor to get involved in this business as it did last year but to continue in it and to continue it on a self-sustaining basis. Any other discussion? All right, hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Raise your hands. All opposed? Is that three to one? Three to one, yes. Three to one, okay. All right, motion carries. I did, I did hear that right. It's fine. Go ahead. Let's close discussion, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We've reached our last section of public comment for the evening. Is anybody changed their mind? Okay. We're going to proceed. Uh, we'll go to reports and uh, we'll start with Mr. Bittner. No report this evening. Ms. Washington? No report, sir. Mr. Thomas? Uh, thank you, Mayor. No report. Uh, Mr. Warden? No report, sir. Just glad to be here. Me too. Uh, Dr. Woodruff? Mr. Mayor, members of the council, we'd like to inform the public that this evening we're beginning a series of weekly workshops relative to your budget for the coming year. By state law, the budget must be adopted by June the 30th of this year for next fiscal year which is the July 1, 2015 period through June 30th, 2016. This evening after the City Council adjourns, we will begin our first of five planned workshops. Next Tuesday evening at four o'clock, the City Council will be asked to convene to continue their budget discussions. Also this coming Thursday afternoon at 6 p.m. in the Youth Center, the city will be hosting a property owner meeting relative to the potential rezoning of property generally located at Country Club and the Bypass 
or if you think of commerce coming down to Country Club, that property in the ownership of Barton Lanier. All property owners in that area have been invited. The public is also invited. Again, that is 6 p.m. this coming Thursday in the Youth Center across the street from City Hall. Have no other comments other than thank you for your continued leadership and service. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Carter? No reports. Okay. With that, I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. And we're going to go back. Uh, so move. We're going to reconvene. And is that going to be acceptable to reconvene the uh, workshop? Okay. We have a motion and a second. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Meeting adjourned. <laughs>